John Lawrence, uh, amazing photographer and great friend for a very long time, has helped me a lot in my career and showed me so many amazing tricks and tips with my cameras, as well as just lighting and everything. So John Lawrence, we met maybe six, seven years ago. Could it already be, John? So six, seven years ago. And we've had a great relationship. He's helped me throughout. We've done workshops together, everything. John is a teacher and instructor at Canon, as well as Canon ambassador. So without further ado, let's bring in John Lawrence. Welcome to the room, John. What's up, Zach? How's it going? And yes, you are right. Seven freaking years already. Seven years, which is awesome. Seven awesome years. Seven awesome years. Oh, we're excited to have you, John. Thank you for joining me. Absolutely. No, thank you for having me. It's fun to be on this side versus being on the flip side, you know? So it's like, yeah, Dave's like, I feel like I've known you for two. Yes, it has been two years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so John has always been on the back end of helping this. John really helped me to conceptualize this, helped me to name between sets and um, really pushed me to get this going with Canon and with his help as well as with David's help. And they've been instrumental in creating this platform and making this happen. So thank you very much, John and David, um, for being there for me for this. No, yeah. no, absolutely. And I and I know it's th this is going to be fun. And I I was I was really excited like at first, you know. And I remember when you said, "Okay, send me images." So I sent you like my top eight images, right? And yeah. I went through and I you know did what I normally do when people say send you your top eight images. So I sent you like a portfolio of ten, you know, eight to ten yeah. images. And then I remember you hit me back. You're like, "Send me more soccer." <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'll go look for more soccer because I sent you like a variety of stuff. And to your point, Absolutely. first, I I was a creative, right? I, I was on the flip side of the camera, right? I was in front of the camera, I was performing, and then I I went to the back side of the camera. I started being the creative, of taking the photos, and then I I really got into teaching photography. But I was I was into teaching before that, and and mm -hmm. kind of everything that I get into, I get into education you know, right. the teaching component. Cause I, I love helping, you know, like the same thing when you and I were always work together, right? Helping you get better at what you do. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's rewarding to get to yeah. see you. I mean, seeing you as an yeah. explorer of light now. And I remember us talking in the beginning, you're like, Oh, Crazy. I want to be an explorer of light. Oh, I'm like, we can make that happen. It only took <laughs> four or five years, you know, but Hey, yeah. you know, it's uh, yeah. It, and and it's a process what's and great about it is, is totally, totally worth it. And, and what's great is being able now to, to work with the technology behind it, right? And merge kind of both those worlds of the tech, right? And the creative looking at light and then knowing the tech side behind that. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun now to kind of merge these worlds together, which is very cool. Absolutely. I mean, so many different facets and learning. Tell us a little bit about what you do um, at Canon right now and how people can get in touch with you or how, how you could kind of work with you because you know, pre COVID and, and we will get back to those points. You were doing amazing workshops different learning things, working sh with Larry Chen, all the people, I mean, amongst just having like a career as a photographer as well. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Canon and how people can get involved with what you do. Absolutely. So I think right now, really, we are all in, I think, you know, the overused phrase is, is the new normal. And, and really what it comes down to is we're, we're in a transitional period. We're trying, I think everyone is trying to figure out what's next, right? What's the foothold? And, and even though people are finding some ground now, we're, we're still figuring out, I think, where the next normal is going to be, right? Not the new yeah. normal, the new normal is a transition, right? Where we're going. Yeah. And I think as we do that, as we get to that point, you know, it's, it's figuring out the, the little steps in between. So for example, like all of our workshops that happen, a lot of those things transition to virtual, right? How do, and how do we do that engagement? And, and that's where things like this show came about, but we're yeah. also doing the back end training as well. Like, I still train and work with our different third party partners to train their associates because sales are still happening everywhere and, and mm -hmm. people are still going out and photographing and people are still working with cameras. So it's, it's working and educating people. I literally just before the show, I was in Palm Springs. Hey, you know, wow. and so I was at Palm Springs photo festival because all of the conferences <laughs> that are still happening, they're happening virtually. Yeah. So, you know, it's, right. it's no different than when, when you were doing things in New York with B and H, I was just doing something with Palm Springs photo festival and I was there at yeah. a panel with, Eric from New York, right? My, my coworker and counterpart. Nice. And so, you know, doing panels and doing virtual shows yeah. and doing virtual trainings. Still it's, going on. It's really, it's, yeah, it's helping people find their next step, right? And, and, and all those different yeah. facets. How, how do people find out about these talks and going on? I, I, I am speaking at Palm Springs Photo Festival Thursday, 
So I'll be there at Pacific Standard Time, uh, speaking in the Canon room about water photography. But how do people find out about all these different festivals and the talks um, that Canon's doing and that you're speaking at? And how, how can we join? Absolutely. So, I mean, there are so many ways because obviously, right, where well, there's all sorts of information. An easy place to land is learn.usa.canon.com, right? And okay. that will bring you to that landing page. Now, again, things are always changing, right? I mean, you know, it's like there there are always going to be other places. There, there are going to be places to learn. You can learn through Canon on YouTube. You can learn through Canon on social media, right? So we have tips and tricks like Lens Day Wednesday uh, that mm -hmm. one of our amazing teams puts together. These awesome tips mm -hmm. that go up every single uh, week on nice. on Instagram. And that's not going to be on our, our own, you know, website, right? Yeah. So, you know, as you know, right. there are always going to be different ways that pop up. I would say mostly any social channel or any channel where you can kind of find Canon, you'll find mm -hmm. some sort of education that'll be happening. It's just, and Wonderful. that's kind of the way to, to think of it. Think you want to get better at photography, you want to mm. be a Canon, right? It's, and, and again, Absolutely. you don't have to be shooting <laughs> Canon to learn yeah. photography as we right. do with our, with, you know, workshops with you. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, without further ado, Let's bring yeah. you here on and let, let's, let's get into the good stuff. Tell us a little bit. I mean, let's, tell us how you got started with photography as we look at this and what we kind of got going. So where did you begin with your photography career? Because I know before Canon, you were with Apple. Um, and I assume you've just been shooting for a very long time with how your photography looks, the progression and everything that you're doing. Where did it all come about? You know, and and I and I I I hoped and I thought you might go there. So so I did. Oh, good. I did right by these photos. Yeah. So okay. so this shot here is going to help us take us on a story. So uh, this this shot is is uh, personally important to me, but also uh, it was a very strong uh, change in my business uh, as a photographer. And then it was it was a huge learning lesson, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, this photo uh, is uh, Jamie Watson, who was a striker. Uh, and forward for Orlando City Soccer, uh, who is now uh, still a friend of mine to this day, uh, who is now a uh, sideline reporter for Nashville. So he's still with MLS and he's now a sideline reporter, right? Or he's a, sorry, a color analyst is what he does now. So he, okay. he does all the fun color stuff, you know, when people are talking, he comes in and says, I'm going to make it funny. Uh, now, what's great about this is that the first time that I saw this photo printed was on the side of the road at billboard size. Jeez. And and I'm driving on Interstate 4 in Orlando, and as I'm driving, suddenly I see this billboard, and I'm like, wait, wait, that was my photo. And it was almost 1 o'clock in the morning. I was driving home from Disney, and I had just had a, like a long day there, and I, I, was, I was kind of asleep, so I was like, no, that couldn't have been. I took the next exit. I came back around. I went back on Interstate, and I was like, holy cow, that's mine. So I did what any normal person would do. I broke every type of – well, actually, it wasn't a law. Yeah. And I took my phone out, and I took a photo of it while I was driving. You know, I'm not supposed to do – don't do that. I don't condone it, but I took a photo of it, right? And, and of course, have a photo of my billboard. I was stoked to have this photo of the billboard. And then what's the very first question that my friend who was a photographer asked me? That's awesome. How much did you get for it? Hmm, because it was a photo for Orlando yeah. Health, which was their lead yeah. sponsor. So here's this amazing yeah. thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and that party. was my learning lesson, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. I didn't sign a contract. I didn't do anything. I had just been going to shoot. Mm. So how did I get there, right? That's a good question, and that brings us to this. Okay. This was my very first photo shoot ever, ever. Wow. And, and, and I, I was just starting to say, I think I like photography. It's a lot of fun. Mm. Digital photography was starting to become a little bit more of a normal. I, would I was taking photos all the time as a kid. I would take film photos, digital disposable camera photos where you power the flash and things like that. And, and I was always a, a ham and, a, you know, like just mm. having fun with it, you know, just making people look up a certain direction, mm. look up and I'd take a photo from down here. It was always, it was always about the connection with the person right. and not necessarily mm. about the photo of the person, right? Very yeah. John Hook-esque, right? You know, candid yes. in that field. Photography. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, photography, exactly. And so, yeah. you know, when I said, okay, I actually want to, you know, take photos of people, I had met Stephanie, who's in this photo, uh, and and she and I connected, and I said, I'd love to take, uh, you know, do a photo shoot with you. I think, you know, you should you should shoot. Uh, you'd be gorgeous on camera. And she said, I, I don't model. Are you a photographer? And I said, not really. I, I have a camera. I'd like to get started. So I had my digital Rebel and my 18 to 55 millimeter lens, and this shot was almost toward the end of the shoot where I said, oh, I, they always do those shots where they're like looking up, right? So let me stand over you and I'll look down and I'll just get this shot. Now, 
This turned out pretty darn decent for what it is because when you really think about it, it's someone who had no clue what they were doing with their camera. This meant darker, this meant brighter. That's all I knew because I was on program mode. Yeah. And on top of that, she has light eyes and she's looking up at the sun, right? So not an easy thing to do. And so it was making her say like, okay, look in. I really need you to kind of like look, you know, like with your eyes, I want you to look a little intense. And, you know, how do you do that with light eyes when they're trying to keep them open in any way? So mm -hmm. this was the culmination of working with the person. It wasn't a technological achievement or success. This was a success in working with a person, right? So that to me gotcha. was my big takeaway. And this was my first photo shoot. From there, well, then things just really started accelerating. I started taking uh -huh. photos of more and more people. And then I was, to your point, working at Apple. And a friend yes. of mine said, hey, have you shot our soccer team? And I said, I, I didn't know that Apple had a soccer team. That's cool. <laughs> let's let's go do it. And, and he said, no, 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 no. He said, Orlando. And I said, I didn't know Orlando had a soccer team. I said, that's cool too. And the same thing. So he said, yeah, you should reach out. And I had just finished my degree in photography. And uh -huh. I was so excited about the opportunity. I just fired off an email. I didn't think twice about it. I sent an email out to the first person that I could find that said anything media. And I found the media relations guy and I sent him a, a blind email and said, I'd love to come out and shoot the next game. Wow. And he said, that's, so, that's so you great. got a degree you in your photography. You got the degree right away because of your passion for photography. You knew it was something that you wanted to kind of have and, you know, just well, a, uh, actually well, the degree came, came way down the road. I got my first, okay. I went to school for music. Yeah. I went to school for okay. music. I was going to be the next Justin okay. Timberlake. And uh, I yeah, was in a, so I, I did all this, all the, oh, it's just true. I could be, yeah. And I like Justin how he is. I don't need to be. Yeah. So, uh, and really it, it, for me, it was, I liked interacting with people. Performance was a normal for me because I grew up wanting to perform and doing that. And then I knew what I liked to see because I was on the other side of the camera. So I knew what I, every time I'd get a photo of me as I like this or I didn't like that. Or every time I was on, yeah. you know, it, this is what I like to see. But it was, it was never looking yeah. at me as a model. I was looking at my review of my music or performances, gotcha. right? But I was looking yeah. at visuals. And, and so for me, like when I started taking photos and taking it seriously and I started to get the education in it, it, it like took off like hotcakes because again, gotcha. it, knowing what you're doing, right? You get into a car for yep. the very first time, you don't know how to turn it on, but once you know that it's push to start and not turn to start, you're set up for success. <laughs> <laughs> right? Absolutely. So, hey, you know, it, it also goes though to like having the eye because you seeing your composition, how you framed up your model in that first shot that you did and everything like that. Those aren't things that school can necessarily teach you. You know, to a degree, they're going to push you in a way. I will but agree if you don't have the yeah. eye, you don't have the eye. And that, that makes a huge part of photography in what we do is having that like eye. And it's a hard thing to explain, as you know, but it's something of like finding these moments like in this shot, seeing the guy flying through the air, seeing the ball and having all of these things. Shooting action in sports, a stadium with night lights like this is not easy. It, it you know, so, having your settings, having all those like, Whew. Super, super challenging, super challenging. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the reason why I like this photo is this was to me where everything started to really come together. This is where I started to realize the art and the science and kind of everything gotcha. merging together. I was like, okay, I was shooting a 300 millimeter 2.8 lens. This okay. was on a 1D Mark IV, right? So you remember that was a, an APS-H sensor, right? So a 1.6 okay. crop or sorry, 1.3 crop. Right. So the 300 millimeter lens is like a 420 millimeter effective yep. crop. So is getting out there a little bit. So I knew I started to do the math in my head as I was getting more creative. I was like, OK, I know that that's about 400 millimeters away. So when I get a full frame camera, I want 400 millimeters to get this look. Oh. But look at the, the depth of field. You can see the persons yeah. in the background, yeah. right, how far they are. And I yep. started to I would take the time in in between sets and I would walk the field and say, how far was this and how far mm. is that background? OK, this is a sweet spot. So when I see the players coming in it's finding that sweet spot. It's no different than your home that's break, true. right? You know, that's your true. home break, you know where it is, right? you know, the beautiful what lens, spots. what swell, right? what lens and everything. Yeah. And, and you know, that comes with experience. This goes for any thing that you are shooting out there, everyone that's listening. And it, it's, it's something that you will start to find, you will start to hone, you will see what lens works best in what situation. I mean, I love prime lenses. I think I know you do as well. And it just, it makes me move my feet more. It, it makes me be a little more in tune than sitting there with a the Zoom. You know, their Zoom works for certain situations, absolutely. But having that where you can like move with your 50, your 24, 
35, whatever it is, 85, it, it gives you that certain look and you kind of create more of your style, I feel, using primes than you do with zooms. It, it forces you to look and constantly mm -hmm. relook at the situation, Absolutely. right? Because you are constantly framing, reframing, every move yeah. you make is a change yeah. versus the the inherent lazy capability that's there oh, with man. the zoom lens. But yep. the same thing, I love the, I love the versatility again. So yeah. here's the yeah. shot. Like previously I found that yep. distance, right? So here it is finding the distance, yep. loving it. And here now yep. I'm able to say, I'm gonna put myself in the yep. spot where it yep. looks like the ball's coming right at me, but this is a cross mm. and the ball is gonna curve and it's gonna curve around. But again, mm. I know where this is going to come from. I put position myself in the right place, right, and and get the shot. Mm. The same thing. And as my photography started to grow, I started to find like, hey, I want my backgrounds to be a little mm. cleaner, right? Gotcha. I wanted to add a, a front element here, right? You see here, no yeah. front elements previously, right? Yeah. There's, there's a yeah. clash, right? But that's the action, right? What, what were you using to focus then, John? You're using AI servo or what are you using yeah, so, on your focus? Just so we have like a little bit of like, you know, focus points, all of those things. Help us a little bit for the people that are interested in sports photography. What would they be using 100%. to shoot these? Give yeah. us, give me a little bit of settings, all of those things, John, please. Yeah, absolutely. So my, my rule of thumb is a little bit higher than most. Right. And, and okay. that's just systemic of, it of works me saying, yeah, I, I want like, I want tack. I want what I want. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's not always the tack sharp images. It's, it's the image that's yeah. going to make you stop and say, Oh, I got to wow. look at that. Right. Yeah. So for me, it's saying that in all of these shots, I'm looking at a minimum of 1600th mm. of a second shutter speed. Right. I know we minimum say, wow. you know, action is a thousandth of a second. I like yeah. 1600th because again, I'm stopping not only what's coming off of the cleat, right? But I'm stopping mm. moments in time. I'm stopping everyone moving around like this shot here, the fish eye. Wow. I'm, everyone's moving. Yeah. What are their yeah. blinkings doing? You know, I need to get yeah. every split second. And again, yeah. the split second of time, a thousand versus 1600, I'm not going to fit in more frames per second, right? Because I've already, no. I'm going to fit it in there, but yeah. I'm going to get more of those decisive moments that I want crisp, gotcha. right? So again, like right. blinking as a vibe, things like that. A shot like this, again, those split second moments of time, having a foot forward, things like that, that's where it's gonna start to come into play. Mm, uh, this shot beautiful. here, again, I start working with wider apertures because yes, we like mm. shallow depth of field, but also the way that the light interacts with the lens, the Ooh. more shallow the depth of field, the more of you get that orb as we start yep. to see in the right-hand side, that orb. Yep. As we start to stop down, we start to get a little bit more of those spires. Another reason why I would make creatively that choice to say, I'm gonna shoot a little bit wider. So. Again, here, mm -hmm. as I started to grow a little bit more, we're still in Orlando, right? I'm still, I haven't moved to California okay. yet in my history timeline here, but I, mm -hmm. I then started to say, well, these are fine and these are pretty. But as I said before, I wasn't making money, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I was making some money, but I, I really wasn't making enough for it to be sustainable. I was work. Apple was my, you know, nine to five. This was yep. still a passion. I was, it was a team, but Galaxy, as you see behind there, United World Soccer, USL, it wasn't MLS mm -hmm. yet, right? Or Orlando City. Uh, understood. So, okay. So, so, you know, it was, it was exciting, but it was always, I was creating good images, but you can see as we're looking at here, right? What's missing from this shot background, right? If we were in a stadium with tons of fans mm -hmm. behind it, there's a lot more mm -hmm. that can be compelling. And that's just, again, just depends on yeah. location, location, location. Mm -hmm. This brings us to that location, Whew. right? So yep. I, moved, I moved to California and when I moved to California, this is another uh, one of those fun stories of persistence pays, right? And so... I moved to California and in moving to California, I moved uh, while still working for Apple. And while I was with Apple, I, you know, again, left the Orlando city team photographer job. I, I gave it, handed it over to my second uh, photographer, my second shooter. And then I, I stepped away from it and coming to California. I knew that there were soccer teams here, but I also knew that, you know, David Beckham played for the LA galaxy. And, and yes, there were not only one team, but there were many team photographers and it yeah. wasn't even in my mind to, to do something. Mm -hmm. And literally one day someone said, Hey, did you see that the galaxy is looking, you know, they're hiring a second shooter, a second photographer. And I said, wow, oh, I, I had no idea. That's great timing. <laughs> I had only been in yeah. California for two weeks. I was like, this is perfect timing. So I reached out and I sent an email. I said, Hey, I would love, you know, here's my credentials. This is what I've done. You know, I sent just a very intro mm -hmm. email and filled out their application form. Got a wonderful email back uh, from their chief photographer, Robert Mora, who said, thank you. I uh, love the email. I uh, appreciate it. You're, you're overqualified for this position, but welcome to California. <laughs> and, and, I, and I was like, and, 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 and was even so nice to say, if you'd like to get together sometime and chat, you know, that would be great. Not a problem. 
So I'm like, okay, well, that's that's fine and dandy, but I I, I wanted the, the opportunity, right? And so then, then I said, let me fire back another email. So I wrote back another email. I said, thank you for the welcome. Uh, I think a great welcome would be meeting with you to talk about how I would be a great fit for this position, right? Yeah. And so he said, so okay, asking like those questions, it, it, it's right? going further because instead of you guys taking the answer as it is, it, it's finding to do what you want to do. It, it's not taking that no for the answer. It's, you know, getting to that where, because these people reaching out and doing that, that knowledge that they can share, many people want to share that knowledge. Many people want to help you to do those things that you want to achieve. You just need to ask the right questions is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. Well, and also the, well, it, the big thing is don't, as a photographer is we very much are artists and we yes. take rejection very yes. personally. Right. And, yeah. and I am an artist through and through. I told you my first passion was music. Right. So, so we take rejection very, very, why do you think that I work for Canon and I'm not fully freelance, sir? I give you so much credit for going freelance, for taking that dive and doing what you did. My sister, the same thing. She is a freelance graphics artist. I give all of you so much credit and that's why I enjoy what I do because I get to support all of you, right? It's great in supporting mm -hmm. all of you. And again, I wear my other hat. Sports is clearly Absolutely. where I, I, you know, that's my stronghold and my foothold. And so yeah. what, what this is, is it's a lesson for me in don't take no for an answer and revisit it. It's, okay. it's the same thing as a uh, shark tank. You know, the, the judges on there, two of the judges were given a no at first and they came back yeah. and they said, well, let's talk about that. You know, I know that you're saying no, yeah. but let's chat yeah. about that. And yeah, so yeah. in doing that, he said, let's have a phone call. I got with him on the phone and, I, and after the phone call, I positioned almost exactly what you said. I said, I can always learn. You can yeah. learn. We can learn together. I said, I'm, and I said one very important thing. And I said, I'm not gunning after your job. I yeah. told him that. I said, I'm not going to be here for five years and just try to take your, I said, I want to be part of a team. I said, when I was yeah. in Orlando, I built a team. I said, that's what I want to do. And the rest, as they say, is history. This was that mm, same wow. year I started shooting with them. We won the MLS cup that first year. <laughs> it was uh, a, a, a huge rush. You know, I went from, mm. uh, you know, basically getting a thanks you're overqualified to shooting MLS cup and, and winning the entire thing. And, and it was a, a great feeling. And, and again, to be part of a winning team is, is always nice. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Between Sets. Make sure to like and subscribe to be tuned in on all future episodes. Thank you.